It's never nice to receive complaints, but unfortunately, complaints are very common in clinical practice. It's important when you first receive a complaint to step back from the emotion and the upset that that causes. There's a temptation to be defensive when you first receive a complaint, but that is rarely helpful. It is unlikely that you would have all the information you need to reply at the point that you receive the complaint, and you might want to look up the subject matter, perhaps in NICE guidance or other CPD, or to discuss it with supervisors and your peers. Once you have all of that information, you can consider what the best way of dealing with the particular situation that arose would have been. If there was a better way of dealing with it, that doesn't automatically mean the way that you dealt with it was wrong, but if you have found a better way of dealing with it, there is no harm in saying so. It is this reflection and continuous learning, even from the most malicious and vexatious of complaints, that ensures a professional response. Some of the most difficult complaints involve very emotional language and that coincide with doubts you may have about yourself. When a complainant alleges that you lack knowledge or compassion or empathy and inside you're feeling burnt out and detached, that can resonate. We all go through a cycle of feeling confident in a new job and then having self-doubt. And if a complaint coincides with a moment of self-doubt, it can be particularly damaging. It's important that you don't take a complainant's view at face value. If you are bothered by the emotive content of a complaint, you can check that out with a senior colleague or your peers. They know you much better than the complainant does. And if the impact of the complaint is really making you worried, then please don't hesitate to contact your educational supervisor for support or your own GP or the MDU.